Outsiders, DC's little team that could is ready to ride once again with a brand new lineup and a brand new mission statement. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Outsiders number one, a brand new series courtesy of the creative dynamos that are Lanzig and Kelly, to find out what happens next together, shall we? So then, as we join the book, we pick on up with Kate Kane Batwoman. She's currently walking around some sort of Middle Eastern war zone, one that we learn has only been made much worse by American involvement, namely the likes of Amanda Waller and Argus. Kate and ends up getting accosted by none other than Luke Fox Batwing, who is looking just fly as hell in that brand new white suit. As Luke explains, he's been looking for Kate for a while. He had assumed that she went to ground following the events of Gotham War with Batman and Catwoman at each other's throat and the entire city basically eating itself. And it's true, Batwoman does kind of fall off the face of the earth in that story. Kate assumes that Luke has been dispatched by Batman to come and find her now that the dust has settled back in Gotham, but in truth, the opposite is actually actually what's going on here. Batwing, it seems, is also pissed off at the regular state of Gotham City, how everything explodes into a giant war pretty much every year. Just because heroes and villains alike just can't seem to keep their egos in check, it's because of that Luke has decided to put his considerable fortune, some of which is the Fox family fortune and the rest is probably Bruce's fortune, which the Foxes have been in charge of since the events of Joker War, to fund a brand new world-saving endeavor, only this one wouldn't be your tradition capes and spandex operation instead of going around punching bad guys and trying to save the world that way. Luke says he wants to dedicate his time and manpower into plunging the deeper secrets of the universe, education, understanding, enlightenment, and I mean it only makes sense, the DC universe is absolutely amazing and yet it feels so often superheroes end up falling into the same ruts over and over again. Kate is willing to join the group, but only if she doesn't have to wear a wig, which is very funny, and also so if this thing is going to be a completely 100% Batman-free zone. Which it is. I mean, except for the fact that The Outsiders is literally a team that was put together by Batman in the first place, and Luke's own brother Jace was Batman for a little bit, and Jace even gets name-dropped in this issue, but no Bruce. It's a no Bruce allowed club. It's not long before Kate and Luke are on their way to the Arctic Circle, where they end up meeting up with the third member of their brand new team, an older Aboriginal woman going by the name Drummer. Drummer is actually really interesting for a number of reasons. For one, Kate clocked the fact that this woman is old enough to be her mother, yet for some reason on the cover of the book, she's drawn much younger than she is on the inside. I don't know if they're trying to imply that maybe this lady has been alive longer than she's been letting on, or maybe that we should be suspicious of her. She's also a metahuman whose power is she can talk to history. Which at first glance might not exactly sound like a very interesting power, but remember, this group of outsiders is trying to learn things, and they've discovered quite the ar archaeological find buried in the snow, a massive subterranean facility filled with high-tech machinery, the likes of which no one's ever really seen before. Luke and his father Lucius had sent a team down there to investigate and see what they can find, but in classic fashion, they're not reporting in anymore, meaning this is a job for some costumed crime fighters. The new outsiders aren't down there long before they end up tripping the security system and getting shot at by a bunch of sentry guns. The loud, disembodied voice that runs this place also drops reference to the multiverse, which you know what at this point could be anyone's guess what exactly that means. After fighting their way past security and digging deeper into the facility, eventually our heroes discover that what they're actually standing on right now is some sort of alien spacecraft. As we learn from Drummer, this thing is called the Carrier, and it is not only very old, but also very much alive. As the Carrier explains, it was once a home of many heroes, but for a long time now has become lost and forgotten. It's melting down, and it's also kidnapped a bunch of the workers and is holding them ransom. Oh yeah, you know, living spaceships are the hot new commodity for bases when it comes to superheroes. Now, the Avengers just got one. That's not a joke, they actually did. To this book's credit, Luke actually keeps true to his mission statement about not wanting to punch his problems anymore. And he actually manages to not only get the carrier to calm down, but actually win it over to him and the outsider's side by telling a very meta story about how he knows what it's like to be forgotten. Gotten. And I mean, really, let's face it, with his stop-start history in DC Comics, yeah, I would say Luke Fox the Batwing is an expert about being forgotten despite all his hard work. And yeah, with that, the day is saved. Kate decides she's going to stay on with this team. Luke says that he has many more adventures in his back pocket for them to go on, and that they're going to try and learn from all the past mistakes of everyone else who ever thought that they could do a better job at out-Batmanning Batman at his own job by using his money differently. Because,
because already one of the best things about this book is that it is shockingly self-aware. But wait, we're not done yet because as the comic comes to a close, we see Drummer once again venture into that strange subterranean space, only to pull out a planetary guide, perhaps implying that she actually isn't from this Earth at all. And so that was Outsiders issue number one, everybody, and I gotta give this book all the credit in the world for being a very strong start. It wants to clearly be a different sort of superhero book, the kind of book that I think people have been clamoring for, and I hope this one finds its audience. The team is already super interesting. I'm a big fan of Batwoman and Batwing, and I always wish DC would do more with them. As I mentioned before, The Outsiders is one of those books at DC Comics that always ends up coming back despite usually getting cancelled prematurely. It's a series that has always had its fans, especially with fans who end up becoming writers. I would also be remiss not to bring up the historical context for The Outsiders team as they were always home for women, people of color, and other such marginalized groups. And that dedication to representation seems to be alive and well here as we have a black man, a queer woman, an older aboriginal woman all on the same team. I have to wonder if this team is going to stay this small or if we're going to get some more members and maybe even see some cameo appearances from Black Lightning, Katana, and the OG Outsiders team. Overall, I definitely liked this issue and I'll definitely be coming back to issue 2 to see how it all shakes out. Overall, I would give this one a pretty darn positive 7.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Kate Joel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind-the-scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and, you know, help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw. So I want to thank you all and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.